In a couple weeks, I've been uh, posting reruns. Uh, gone through a couple things in the last couple weeks, uh, a lot of tests, trying to work through some old injuries. Um, then, when you get to be my age, you know, like Stone Age type person, uh, you you got to keep things fixed. So, uh, looking forward to having a procedure done, a little surgery on my leg, and then we'll go from there. And uh, so that's why the last couple of weeks have just been in and out and, and uh, trying to get things taken care of. Um, sorry for the inconvenience, and um, we will uh, we pretty much <clears throat> end our period of uh, parables and want to go back to a few things. But today I thought I'd uh, <clears throat> want to cover a couple points, uh, four points in, some, in, a, in a question form. And... Um, have you think about them? I think the greatest thing is when somebody is speaking um, and they say something, you, you, you need to find out if it's true, what they're saying. Uh, and today we have so many different opinions and different things coming out over the news. Nobody knows who to believe. Uh, but I do. I mean, I, I got the answer. So I'll, I'll let you uh, in on it today. Let's, uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another beautiful day in the desert. And Lord, I, I thank you that I have had the opportunity to grow up on the beach, uh, grow up and, and work in the redwoods, and then now in the desert, Lord, and, and uh, all the beauty that you created in this world. I've had an opportunity to, to get a little taste of each one of them. So today I thank you for the opportunity to share and Lord, I just pray that the uh, ears would be open to your word. We ask it in your name. Amen. Okay, questions. Questions and questions upon questions. Um, first one is, you notice I'm not wearing my glasses today. No, it's not that my eyesight got better. It's just I can't find my glasses. I don't know why. Uh, I'll find them or I'll just go by the store and buy a pair of reading glasses because that's really what I need them for. Uh, the four questions, uh, I think they're critical questions, but I think they all have answers. First one is, uh, how can I get an answer to why there's so much evil in the world today? Well, before you get an answer, I think you go to the, to the source to find out what is good, what is evil. So I, I, I live my life, and I, I, I should say, every single day because I think I'm as human as the next person, but um, I, I use the Bible as my guide. And there's, there's many times uh, through my different careers that I've used other books as guides. You know, I was uh, a coach, a baseball coach in high school and college, and I, I used you know, handbooks from other coaches to learn from them and 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 in different philosophies in coaching uh, along, with, along with my own. Uh, I was an athletic director, so I had athletic director handbooks, NCAA guides, and so I followed those. And I got the answers I needed within my career for those. But we're not talking about a career. We're, when we start talking about God, um, we're talking about life. We're talking about the existence of the human race. And so... I always go to the source, and to me, for me, the source is my Bible. And uh, I like to use uh, the New King James or the older version of the NIV, New International Version. Uh, but I've, I have about seven or eight different Bibles um, that basically talk about the same thing, but the translations make it a little bit easier to, to understand for some people. So, um, but that's what, I, that's what I, do, I do. I go to the source. This is my source. So, 
the difference between good and evil, um, oh, I, I think I'll go to the source. And we'll, we'll go to Galatians. And we're going to go to chapter 5. And I'm going to give it my best effort to read this blur. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll, get, we'll get something from it. So if you have a Bible, if not, just listen. And then when you have a chance, go pick up a Bible and, and, or go on your, your cell phone. And, you know, you can do everything audio now, so it makes it a little easier. Galatians uh, chapter 5, I'm going to read uh, 16 and 17 first, if I could see this. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh uh, is against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Uh, there's, the, there's the contrast between good and evil, uh, led by the flesh, the lust of the flesh, or led by the Spirit, good and evil, dark and light. I, it's, it's, it's a simple concept, uh, but it takes faith. And, and secondly, I'm going to read uh, down to 19 to uh, 26. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident. Now this is speaking about the evil part, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you your, your time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, that's a pretty good description about evil. Everything you can think about that's evil in this world is, is right there. So I go to the source to find out what, what evil is, and at the same time, right below that, we're going to go read about the fruit of the Spirit. Opposite of evil is good. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now we're looking at this and we're saying, what's the answer? My answer to the question, how can I get answers to why there's so much evil in the world? So... First thing I have to find out, what is evil? We just did Galatians 5, uh, 16 and 17. And what is good? The Spirit, being led by the Spirit. You know, we, we talk about love, we talk about joy, we talk about peace. And, and we understand that that's the good versus the evil. But here's the key. You get to choose. That's the real answer to this question. How can I get answers? You find out what it is. But the answer is simple. It's your choice. God gives you that free will. He gives you the opportunity to follow whatever path you're going to follow. Uh, and it's a narrow path, people. Uh, it's, um, I'm not saying that, that even the Christian is in a Christian walk doesn't fall and trip sometimes because we're human. We all have that original sin. But the true believer jumps right back on the horse and um, continues his ride on the right path. So for that question, simple. It's your choice. Now that you know what good is and you know what evil is in a simple, in simple scripture, you can make a choice in which way you want to go. So secondly, another question that, that always, always hits me is, is there hope? our country. Uh, can we turn it around? We hear this all the time. Boy, you know what? If we could just get together, the Democrats, the Republicans, the left wing, the right wing. I'm not a politician, but I go to the place where I could get the answer. And again, I go to the scriptures, and I want to find out uh, hope, faith. Can we turn it around? Why are we so special? Uh, we're not. 
and I, I don't want you to think I'm un-American, I'm unpatriotic. Uh, I'm red, white, and blue all the way. But we're not. This Bible, this guideline for life, for humanity, uh, it wasn't written to us unless we spoke Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. It wasn't written to us. We're nothing special. We've only been around a little over 300 years. Um, and this, this world's been around for 5,000 plus. So we're not special. We're part of a bigger picture. We're a piece of a bigger picture. And so we're not important, even though we as Americans really think that the sun rises and, and you know, it shines on us and sets on us. Um, and as American as I am, I realize that we're just a little piece of the puzzle and nothing special. So how do we turn our country around? Uh, it, it's going to take faith, and I don't even want to give you an answer because I really don't believe it could be turned around. I don't believe the world could be turned around. I believe it's already written in stone. The beginning to the end is, is right here. We have, we, we have so many issues when it comes to understanding uh, God, understanding the universe. We have issues because we don't go to the source. You know, we go to other people. We, we put our trust in other people. And even in churches, you know, I'm going to speak about that in a minute. You can go to a church and you could have somebody get up and be preaching about something that is totally against what God wants. And you're going to follow it. You totally trust that person. So that person is going to lead you, but he's going to lead you to hell. And it, you really want to know about hell? Pick up the Bible. You want to know about heaven? Pick up the Bible. Don't listen to what other people say. Some people are saying, well, there's heaven on earth. Not right now, there isn't. Uh, in, the, in the future, there'll be heaven on earth. Uh, but there won't be hell on earth. There's hell on earth right now. There are things going on in this world that you and myself are, are not only unaware of, but can't fathom the kind of persecution that's going on, and I'm going to cover that in a second. But if, if you want to read a, a beautiful chapter, I want you to, to go to Hebrews, and we call it the faith, the faith chapter, and it's chapter 11 in, he, in Hebrews. I love this chapter uh, because it is about faith. It is about hope. Uh, and it's not about hope for America or hope for Canada or hope for Great Britain, um, it's the hope of eternity in heaven. That's the hope, and it takes the faith. And I'm just going to read the very first, first um, verse in Hebrews 11. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, for by it the elders obtained a, 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 a good testimony. And it goes on to talk about some of the greatest people in history, it talks about uh, uh, Moses, talks about Enoch, Abraham, and their faith and what they gave up and what they did, what, who they followed. And it's a beautiful chapter. And people say, well, what if you don't believe in that? Well, then you don't believe in George Washington either. You don't believe, believe in Abraham Lincoln, because guess what? I wasn't here when they were here. Only thing I know is somebody wrote it down in a history book. So I went to school, and I'm sitting there learning about Abe Lincoln, six foot four, six foot three, with a beard, and a top hat. The, the most I, I knew about him was he was on a penny, which, by the way, is worth anything anymore. And George Washington, what did he do for this country? First president, chopped down a cherry tree. I know that's a rumor, but I like that rumor. Chopped down a cherry tree. He couldn't tell a lie. That's a lie, because uh, we're not perfect. But that's history. And you're reading in the Old Testament here, you're reading about uh, the history of the Jews. It is history documented. And, and it's, there's, no, um, there's no substitute for that history that was written down. So when you pick up this Bible, it's beginning to end. It's got the hope. It's got the faith, the faith chapter here in Hebrews. You've got to read that because it does take faith. Because you're believing in something you can't see, you know. Uh, and I always like to compare this. You know, Tim's our Tim's our resident uh, Bible study uh, 
leader in, in Genesis. And far be it for me to argue science with Tim. As a matter of fact, when I listen to him, it's like being in a classroom. And I, I personally, I enjoy that. But science, science didn't create God. God created science. And we don't create things. We don't create things because when you create something, you're taking and making something from nothing. We can't do that. We're just human beings, and we are human beings that have an option to either read this and follow this or not. And uh, read Hebrews 11, and chapter 11, and I think you'll start to understand because it's going to open up all these doors, all these stories that you could go back into the Old Testament and actually read about the history and how the history came together, not only with the present, but the future. So where are we going to turn for peace uh, and understanding? Uh, the only peace that we're ever going to have is in our heart. The only peace that we're ever going to have is the peace that um, God promises us e eternal life. If you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that peace is in your heart. No matter what kind of trouble, what kind of turmoil you're in, um, and going through. Christians are no different than non-believers. Uh, we, uh, we all have original sin. We're all going to die. matter of when and where is only up to the Lord. We don't know when. We don't know where. We don't know how. We just know that that's going to happen, and we need to be prepared. So how do we get this, uh, this understanding, and why is the Scripture so important? Uh, so important for us. I'm going to turn, and, I, and I, one of my favorite, favorite uh, passages uh, is 2 Timothy uh, 3, 16 and 17. And spouse it up in a, in a nutshell for me, and it's one of the, one of the passages in the very first Bible course uh, called Bibliology that I learned and understood that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It doesn't say every bad work, every good work. And scripture is given by inspiration of God. It was God breathed. No, God didn't write this. God breathed this. God inspired men to write this. Holy men. Um, and so when you read it, you can't really go through this Bible and try to prove it wrong, because if you try to prove it wrong, it's going to show you the way, the right way. It's going to prove to you that God, not only does God exist, but God has a plan for your life. And until you know him and accept him, then you've got the wrong plan going. It's just pretty simple. Life is, life is a difficult thing to live. But it's very simple, uh, a very simple example of, of right and wrong, of uh, disobedience and obedience. It's, uh, it's laid out for us right here. And as a believer, this is your guide. As an unbeliever, I don't know what your guide is. I have no clue what your guide is. I know that my guide, when I was a believer, was just, specifically called fun. I'm not going to knock fun. I like fun. But joy is, is much, much better than fun. But I had fun when I was a kid. Did I do wrong things when I was a kid? Sure I did. Um, nothing to be locked up for, uh, I don't think. Uh, but, but it wasn't until I accepted Christ that I realized, wait a minute, I got some, some rules and some guidelines that I need to follow. And I need to share, because if I keep it a secret, all my friends, all my family, I'm not going to be with them at the end. And, and, and that's what I want. You know, I, I don't really care what anybody thinks about um, my belief, because it's my belief. And we're, we're America, and here's the thing, again, America says, hey, we've got freedom to believe what we want, freedom of religion. And, and that's true, because other countries, they don't. Um, I, I could read you every, on Sundays we get these um, things in our little bulletins, church around the world, and, 
until you pick one of these up and until you understand how blessed we are in this country, we're, we're blessed, we're so blessed that we could criticize, we could uh, demoralize people, we can, we can commit, we can do anything we want to do, we have this freedom to choose who we want to worship, which church we want to go to. And there's some in other countries, just a quick example in Vietnam, in China, uh, in, uh, in Uganda, a mother was stabbed for becoming a Christian. Who stabbed her? Her husband. She stabbed because she accepted Christ, and, and that's not what their religion is. But she lived, and she went on, and there's so many stories of people that, that don't live, that are dying for their faith. And it's, 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 it's really weird. I think it's, it's weird that in the countries where they're dying for their faith, they're persecuted for their beliefs, Christianity is, is blowing up. People are looking for the answer. They're looking to Christ. They, they have faith. And in a country where we have freedom to choose, choose the wrong path. Choose the wrong place of worship. Do, do I think there's a difference in churches? Absolutely. Do I think there's a difference in religions? Absolutely. Well, I'm not going to tell you uh, which one is correct. No, maybe I'm going to tell you which one's correct. It's not my church. It's not here. It's not Linwood Community Church. It's not the First Baptist Church. That's a local church. The one true church is the Church of Christ. The one true church is a universal church. Okay, I want you to picture this. The rapture comes, and believe me, rapture's coming. And I would love to be sitting actually on a, on a, on a San Pedro hill, looking down over San Pedro at all the different churches, and I'm looking at my, my Catholic brothers and sisters, my, my, my Baptist friends, Presbyterian, Methodist, all the churches that believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again. Believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, because there's something you have to believe in. If your religion doesn't believe in that, now that's the wrong religion. But all of these churches belong to the universal church of Jesus Christ if you've accepted Christ. So I'm sitting on this hill, and I look down at Mary Star, at Holy Trinity, at, at 7th Street Baptist, at the little Mexican church down on Center Street, and the rapture comes, and I get to be the last guy raptured. Well, maybe the middle. I don't want to be the last one. That would be cutting it too close. But I get to see these spirits just going up. Out of every one of these, these churches that have people that belong to the universal church of Christ, the body of Christ. But the sad part is, even in all those churches, um, there's going to be a lot of people left in the pew. There's going to be a lot of people left behind. And see, they're going to know why, because they're sitting in a church that's taught them what's going to happen, but they just didn't have the faith. They didn't accept Christ. They didn't follow. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. That's what that is. Think about that. You're not going up if you haven't gone through. He's the way. John 14, 6. So as I look on that hill and I look on the people being caught up, um, it's not about your local church anymore. It's about the universal church. And like I said, America is no different. It's humanity. God came to save the world. Jesus came to die for those in this world. Die for sinners. Die for us. He gave us that choice. That's our choice. And, and I'm sitting on that hill, and man, I'm probably happy saying, hey, don't, but there goes my brother, oh, there's my cousin, oh, there's my friends. And then uh, if I had to look into the churches who was left or the people that were left, I'd probably be crying because I'd have a lot of friends and family that um, weren't true believers. Again, we're not talking about your local church or where you worship. We're talking about the body of Christ. So my questions are answered. Uh, all of them point to one thing. So those, those four questions, those four points, those four instances are right here. There's, here's the answer. 
Um, you, you can ask yourself any question. Um, why is this happening? Why does this, where are we going next? How, you you want to know about the separation of church and state? Jesus did that. A simple, as simple as it could be to give Caesar what Caesar, what God is God. I, how, how clear can you get, can you be? Every answer is right here. And as we go forward, uh, I'll be back again, live again next week. Uh, we're going to take on some issues and give us some pathways, some examples, and some stories. And it's my um, humble, humble pleasure to be able to share with you today. And um, I'd like to close in prayer and, and just uh, ask you to think about this for a minute. Think about what your church represents, the local church. Are they teaching you uh, about Jesus Christ? Are they teaching you about the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Trinity? You can't leave one out. If you leave one out, you may as well leave them all out because all three of them are one. Are you teaching about the things that, that need to be taught so that you could one day be sit, maybe sitting on that hill with me watching people go up? And I think that would be awesome. So um, if you haven't, it's very simple. You're asking them into your heart. You're opening the Bible. You're beginning this new path. And, and some people say, well, are you doing that out of fear? You better believe it. Do you fear hell? You better believe it. And, and so as much as I want to preach about the happiness of heaven, I got to tell you, man, the, the, the fear of hell for me is, uh, is big. So hopefully you can uh, make your own decision. It's your choice. I can't make it for you. Nobody can make it for you. And um, I just pray that, that you do. Open your Bible and uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time that I could share some basic things, Lord, and some, uh, some truth. And that is um, the Bible has all the answers. All the answers that really matter in this life. And uh, I ask you that we take the time to open it, read it, um, ask, the, ask the questions. What am I getting from my local church? Am I getting what it takes to be part of the universal church? And Lord, I just I pray that we can uh, uh, talk about this, share it with friends and family, and not run from it, not hide from it, uh, because it's real. And don't overthink it. You know, it's not about, it's not a, it's not a factual thing. It's faith. It's being, a, it's being able to, to see you even when you can't see you, and to know you're there. And I just pray, Lord, that you open the eyes, you open the hearts, you open the ears of those that are listening. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Looking forward to next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. The beating of my heart is deafening, but I'm still listening in the silence after the storm. Your voice will bring me home. I can hear more than ever, taking me to a place that's better, with a hope that lasts forever. I'll put the pieces together the pieces together with the pieces together together together